Hey, Kevin, Bzzz. Op open up. Bzzz. Who is it? It's Tom. Bzzz. Tom. Tom, you, I, I, I leave the key under the mat. You know this. Bzzz. I got a, uh, I got a, I got six legs full of pollen here. I can't get the key well, when you, I'm coming you, home. You're supposed to keep one pollen-free leg so you can go under my oh, mat and open the door. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Then I wouldn't make your quota. Uh, shit, now I spilt half of the... Fuck, God damn it. Bzzz. What are you even doing here? It's, it's, it's springtime. Hey, shut the door. Lock the door. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I killed a guy. What? What? Yeah. Kevin. I, st I stung a guy. I didn't know that he was allergic to bees. I killed him. Look. You stung someone? Truth be told, I heard that he might have been allergic to bees, but he's been mean to bees for most of his life, and I, I stung him on purpose. I am going to die. Cause now that my, that yeah, my, I was going to say. The stinger ripped out of my butthole. I only have like about four minutes to live. Jesus, Kevin, you buried no, the I lead. No, I killed him. Kevin. Oh, oh God, Kevin. Uh, Buzz. No. Oh. Oh, why are we designed this way? It doesn't make any evolutionary sense. Your, your Majesty! Yeah. Hey. Kevin stung someone and he died. That's what happens. Yes, it is. It's hard to be a bee. Uh... Your voice has gotten deeper. No, it hasn't. It's always been like this. <laughs> we should play B ping pong. Okay. Tink. 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 Man, you know it's you cheat! <laughs> oh. 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 oh, oh my God! <laughs> it, look, it looks like it's Kevin. The ghost of Kevin. I've never. <laughs> this is what ghost bees sound like. Bees can have ghosts. Yes. Yeah. You guys should play a new game that bees play. Okay. It's called B and B. Yeah, it's hard to improvise the end of a sketch, right? Like, I mean, it's 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 easy to improvise them, but then how do you end one? Wait, say that again. How do you end the how do you end an improvised sketch? Live from New York, it's, it's Saturday, Saturday night. night. <laughs> Lorraine Newman, give you the contest. I'm telling you, this format. Has Rachel Dratch. Kate McKinnon, Kevin Sudeikis, Steve Chiatakis, Tommy Hilfiger, Audie Cornish, Ted Nugent. An institutionalized policy of not protecting our writers. From Uptown Burbank, Harmontown is now in session. Spencer Crittenden, I'm Jeff Davis, your comptroller, welcome to the stage, he's already there, he was a bee in that sketch, he was Tom the Bee, the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon, everybody. Oh yeah, and then, and then should I, should the, in the format, should I do like this? Yeah, in the format you should do like that. No, no, okay, go, thank no, 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 you. No, 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 I think, well, let's take it, come off stage and then you walk down like you're... You're Steve Martin. Oh, okay, so for, we need like sexy music. Next week when we do the sketch, well, should we just, just since we're working this out, should we do try to do another sketch and then uh, so that we can end it and I'll run off and then we'll restart the show. But you should also have like a different outfit on, like get like a suit jacket or something like that. Okay. All right. So how are we doing right now? What are we doing? We're gonna just try. Let's, let's, just, let's just, start the sketch over. Yeah, let's just do do another B sketch and okay. um, and we'll try to make it faster because right. it's really just the results aren't important. And we'll just. Uh, All right, Chris, I don't know if we should say let's, live from New York on Saturday night. Well, we got li live from Burbank. No, it's, I think it's it Harmontown night. I right. think it was original. Right. And no one's done that joke. Well, I'll leave it to you guys. Well, let, let's let's feel it up. Okay. Uh, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's black okay. it out. Start. I'll turn off my iPad so it's not being a thing. All right. Okay, for those of you who are listening, it, it, you know, it, it, it's no worse. Well, yeah, let's... Uh, no, let's, let's <laughs> keep them off. <laughs> so that the subscri subscribers can... Wait, 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 just, just... 
uh, Chris, do anything. Take it all, all lights totally down. Can like you just this. throw them up totally full lights really fast? Oh, God. And then we could blink. Bzzz. Okay, so, so now, oh. keep it down. Okay. <laughs> Some bee in this room is a murderer. Hmm. It, wouldn't it be the guy whose guts are hanging out of his abdomen? No, that's the that was the murderee. But when we kill people, we we die too. Our stingers rip out. Why are you uh, the only bee in this room with a stinger clumsily taped to your butthole? Who me be? Live from New York, it's Saturday night session. Hey everybody, welcome to Uptown Burbank. It's Harmontown Night! Sarah Huckabee Sanders is on the show tonight! Musical guest, The Cold Play! And the host, special guest, Dan Harmon! Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Drop a rap beat. Uh, we had a good... Listen, we've got a great show. It's always great to be back. I think this is my 307th time hosting Harmontown. And, uh, you know. Hey, I, I'm Bobby Moynihan. <laughs> I'm Bobby Moynihan. Oh, Bobby. I'm being Bobby Moynihan over here. Look at this guy. Uh, I'm Bobby Moynihan. See, I understand. I get that a lot. See, because, Game of because of the reason why I was asked to host, a lot of times Bobby Moynihan or Keenan Thompson will come out and stand next to me, and then we'll go into a musical number. I'm Keenan Tops. <laughs> but I mean, listen, guys, for the last time, I'm not going to do a song. A rap song. Yo, 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 yo. I'm a special guy going down the riverbed. Got a special eye. In my special head, and what do I see on the shore? A man making s'mores for me. I'm Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Yeah. You're not a hair loss. You're a Baldwin. Like that word toss. That's awesome. Alec that Baldwin really is the good. opposite of hair. Alec hair loss. Alec hair loss. I'm Bobby Moynihan again. Step to the left, step to the right. Keep it top. Do it in your undies tonight. Bobby the Moynihan. Undies, the undies. I'm Alec Baldwin again. I didn't have a different outfit, so I took off my clothes. Tina Fey. <laughs> that was All right. Let's, uh, listen, we've got a great show tonight. Uh, there's no commercials because you're, you're a subscriber. There might be. Uh... There will be there will be commercials if uh, there might be funny fake commercials. Yes, but uh, I think we go right into a fake funny commercial right now, don't we? Gold bond powder. You, you guys have to do it while I get dressed. That's the idea because I keep, okay. I, I had to change outfits. So you guys do the fake funny commercial and then. Oh my armpits! They're so wet. Hey, it's me, your armpit hairs. Oh hey, you I'm getting, sound like that. I'm getting pro- your armpit hairs. Whether or not you know this, your armpit hairs are from Brooklyn. I have peristalsis. <laughs> yeah, we, we started a Kickstarter GoFundMe thing for you so you get some care and you get taken care of for your sweaty armpit hairs. What kind of product you got there in your I, pits? Gold bond powder. Oh, what's that? It's a powder you put in your armpit so I don't fucking drown to death in your weird diseased armpit sweats. And... You just find it yourself. And no, you have I, to- I I have to go online and start like start like the like crowdfunding stuff for you guys. That must take three or four clicks of a mouse. Hey, you you try being a just a hair and try to click a mouse. No. I hope you die, you piece of fucking human shit. Okay, I will. I'm just kidding. Gold bond powder. You don't need to have your armpit hairs click on a mouse anymore. Click you click. Go- uh oh. Flood. 
But uh, now do the pose, like, do, do the photo, like the still photo, like the three, like, like the pose of the, like Dan Harmon. I got a, a pizza. <laughs> I got uh, it. New, New okay. I don't watch that. Right. Harmon Town is now in session. All right. Yeah. Look, well, it's, that's it, a, look it, it's a work in progress. We're still working on some of the kinks to our new format. Um, but uh, our, our new format is mostly based in copyright infringement. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're, well, look, we're gonna, we're not gonna emulate the losers in the institutionalized comedy game. We could try that. I have a killer Miss Swan. I mean, does anybody? Well, can we hear it? No. I mean, I was there. An, was there a, a iconic opening to Mad TV? I think they'd go like, "Why are you mad?" <laughs> uh, and, like they worked their way around to. Like, uh, every sketch, it's just not that. People were impressed by that because they did that for 15 seasons. Like, oh, the sketches always end with somebody getting mad. But that's, that's a pretty amateur thing. I, I trained high school kids in improv. Like, they tend to want to fight or dance and wear props. You got you to gotta encourage them to come out of their shell. So the idea, the fact that, that every mad TV sketch ends with someone getting mad, good idea for a theme, but, but not, not a feat. It wasn't a sacrifice they were making comedically. Right. <clears throat> what did I miss over the last two days? I was up in the uh, the, the northwest. I just been sitting, uh, sitting, sitting. Uh, How's Nigel? How's your side with uh, with the little one? Is he alive? Is he good? Is he, is he recovering? Is he all right? Yeah, he's doing good. I mean, it's like I gotta like I gotta like I gotta deal with all this like shame, you know? Like I I it's you, you, when you own a dog. Which I don't have kids, so a lot of people have kids. Last I checked, like at least four billion of them had them, and uh, like, like, like. I'm, so I, it's got to be worse when it's a kid, but uh, it just sucks because like your dog starts acting weird, and then you got to choose whether to take them to the vet, and then once you take them to the vet, you you just no. It's, it's like I know it's not their fault. Like I'm sure the veterinarian industry is not the fucking is not flush with cash, and I'm sure the doctors that are funneled into it are wonderful people, and I'm sure the technicians that couldn't you know be doctors at a veterinarian hospital yet are also great people, and I'm sure the people that work at the front desk that can't even be technicians, that can't even be doctors, that can't even have human patients. Um, I'm sure they're not five levels beneath normal humanity. They're just five levels beneath a regular doctor. And what is a doctor? As we've discussed on the show, a serial killer with a support system. Um, it's a, a doctor is a person who's comfortable cutting things open. Um, the people that cut humans open and are going like, oh, look, it's, it's what a bladder looks like. <sighs> yeah, why do they call it Kaiser? That's pretty... You know, Kaiser German, yeah. I, I, it's also permanente. It's like an eternal Kaiser. It's, it's like it's, it's, it's Kaiser is from Caesar. Yeah. Why are these people the ones that are trying to save our lives? They want eternal em empirical rule. Yeah. They want they want a permanent Caesar. They want to yeah. rule over your health. Yeah. I mean, look, there's no question that doctors know how to help you when you're sick. But, uh, we, you know, there's also no question that doctors are scientists. They have to be. So they don't, they're, and they're not, you know, what kind of person is drawn to an occupation where you might have to, like, be next to someone who's dying all the time or you might, or just sick, just, just, just you know, where you are every day you get up and go to work and uh, you're just, just going to be nonstop problems and and sick desperate people like looking for answers that you may or may not have with you always like rolling the dice with with advice and diagnoses and things that could either make or break your the, the rest of your life and pay off your student loans like the kind of person that looks at that minefield and goes like i think i'll go hang out in there i'm not going to call them a sociopath but i'm also not going to call them probably also coincidentally like the, ch the the warmest person in the world like they probably have some pretty heavy fucking emotional armor on them um or, as I suspect, they enjoy suffering. They love cutting open dogs. 
because <laughs> the answer is I think that I think that most people follow their I mean like would you go into that field because it didn't hurt you or would you go to that field because you liked it I, I just like I feel like they like the, a little bit a lot of I'm talking about regular doctors here I'm talking about people who are like yes I I see you have a tumor I'm gonna cut you open pull it out oh look there's your lungs there's your heart I hope I don't make it stop beating okay sew them back up okay by the way my name was Tony see you later I'm going going golfing come on serial killer we, we had those people on the show that talked like they were EMTs that mm. talked about they, they have we should have them back like they, they yeah. have injury porn that they yeah. send to each other like who can outgross well now you humanize they don't them. like that yeah there's a, and EMTs they, like they don't they don't get paid very much I think you know we heard like like those people are undoubtedly heroic so now you, you evened it up <laughs> I mean, it was the fact that there are people that are willing to show was it, up was it your, where, where people have like fucking like just fallen down on the sidewalk and no one knows what's wrong with them or hit themselves in the hand with a hammer. Or, or they, they just find a dick and balls laying in the side of the road. <laughs> like, like, or whatever. Like, God knows. Like, was it your idea or, jo- or, or Justin's to have Beth be a veterinarian in Rick and Morty? I can't remember. I, I think that was a decision that was made... Uh, during the writing of the pilot, um, and it, it wasn't based on your current beef with ve- veterinarians. No, and I don't really have a beef with. I only have a beef with the species in general, if that. Which how can you? Like I just, it's not a really a beef. I'm just like, come on, it's as plain as the nose on our face. Like if you're poor, and you are comfortable looking at guts you end up in prison. If you're rich, you end up a doctor. I don't know how anyone can argue with that. <laughs> like, people go to medical school, and then the people that aren't as comfortable looking at guts as murderers fall down and faint, and then they go into research. Yeah, a friend of mine, when I was going to college, maybe I've told the story before, uh, they went, you have to go through like an actual autopsy. And watch a cadaver be like you know totally taken apart, and the for the, for the first time these these young students all walked in there, and there was two doctors over it, and they what the students didn't know because here was a dead human being, and they had lined it with tin foil and filled it with spaghettios, and when the students walked in they were just eating out of the chest cavity and eating spaghettios out of it. Mm. And half the students ran out and barfed or fainted or whatever. And that's that's their little joke. Mm. Get get used to not caring about the insides of people. Yeah, I, you know, that's great that that them, them noticing that they're sociopaths <laughs> plus them having free time makes them want to have fun that way. But so another thing you could do with your free time if you're a sociopath is learn empathy. <laughs> Like you're smart, you learned all of the anatomy. Like you learned how to how to turn your stethoscope into a bong. Like uh, uh, maybe to give them some give them some seminars about humanity and stuff, and like how how people that don't become doctors think and feel. I, I told you about like Alice Flaherty, the the, uh, the neurologist. She's like, we we don't we're not good with people. We 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 look at you in the way that you sit and the things that you say or the things that are wrong with you. You touch something that's cold, you think it's hot. Like, we're looking at your brain. All, like, all we want to do is like, we're zombies. We, we just want to take the top of your head off and poke around in that big bowl of toothpaste, which is your brain. Like, we're not good with people. We just like solving the brain puzzle. Like, if you, if you were good with people, you probably wouldn't be good at sawing off a head and poking around in there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. So these are the people that were, you know, that you have to take your dog to. Your dog can't talk. You take your dog to him. And then, you know, it's probably a technician. It's probably not even a doctor. I don't know if a doctor is the one that has to, you know, it's like I talked to three different doctors on the phone over the three days that Nigel was at the hospital. It's like the bottom line is I'm filled with a lot of toxic shame. Like I took my dog to the hospital um, because he wouldn't stop trembling and um, vomiting. He was vomiting like so much that the equivalent for his size would be like, you know, like the middle, you know, like, like all across the stage, except for the, your area and Spencer's area, like that much, which is, you know, I, I was like, geez, I mean, what, 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 you know, it's time to go to the hospital. Like he's never puked that much. And, uh, and uh, and he already had his issue with where he had you know they had to pull out a clump of grass out of his intestines 
or did they have to? We'll never know. You know, like fans of the podcast will recall that story. The punchline of it is we're left to wonder for the rest of our lives, should we have let the dog pass this giant clump of grass or would that have perforated his intestines on the way out because it was moving so slowly it was almost not moving at all? Do you wait for your dog to try to fit that out his asshole and possibly cause permanent damage to him or do you cause permanent damage to him by cutting him open and pulling it out? That's what we opted to. So this is Nigel's second surgery. Second time he's been cut open by humans that he trusts, and uh, and and I just and, and this time there was nothing in there. There was there, he was he was it was you know he was inflamed. His stomach they X-ray his stomach and they go it's really big. Do you think there's something in there? Did he eat anything that might be trapped in there? Because it's like his stomach is gigantic, and you said he's been puking a lot. So like we think there's something in there and i said well he eats a lot of stuff so the x-ray show a a thing or not a thing no it doesn't show a lot of things as they condescendingly told me like i i even literally said i said are you sure it could could is it possible it could be just inflammation that is make because you're saying his stomach is big i don't even know why i said that i didn't go to fucking medical school i was just it's just like i because i don't want to cut my dog open twice in a year and so I just, it was just kind of almost like, it was just, it was just like, you think it, you think it could be another reason his stuff, because, because what they said, they were using logic at midnight in an animal hospital. So I'm thinking I probably don't have the fucking Sherlock Holmes of animal doctors, right? Or maybe it's the Fox Mulder. Maybe they're so fucking smart about diagnosing animals that they, that, that people call them spooky Dr. McGillicuddy and like make them work at midnight because they're so fucking good at figuring out what's going on. But they were scratching their heads. Your, do- your dog's stomach is huge and you said he just puked like the size of a pool table and, uh, and so his stomach should be small, right? Because he puked all that. And I'm like, this is, can I be a doctor? And, 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 and I was like, well, is it possible that the reason the stomach is large is because it's irritated? Is that a thing? And the, the, the technician, I think there was a technician. I don't think it was a doctor. I, I don't know the difference. Like, 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 like I, honestly, I perceived them looking at me like I was an idiot. And, 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 and they're like, yeah, well, x-rays don't pick up inflammation. So, and I was like, that wasn't an answer. The, 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 the answer that could have saved my dog a lot of pain was, it's possible. I didn't ask if x-rays picked up inflammation. It's like when you, when you go to the bank, when you used to go to the bank, and the people would say, yeah, the computer says no. And you just like, you fill with this rage and go like, this isn't a computer interaction. This is a human interaction. I'm asking a human being a question. Stop pointing at your computer, which you know goddamn well, if your computer told you to jump out the fucking window, you would, you would, you would pat it on the side. You would go like, "What's wrong with it?" If it if this if the screen flickered, which it might and sometimes does, you wouldn't go, "Oh, time to kill myself." Like you're being lazy and you're being and, and, and you're being condescending. I, I was like, like oh, "Yeah, X-rays don't pick up inflammation." I didn't I didn't ask if they did. I asked if his stomach could be enlarged because of inflammation, as opposed to a foreign object. Like, we, do we think he ate a bowling ball? I I, so all, so I I just th- I just and I just think just save my dog save my dog so that at the at the earliest absolute possibility like I, I'm like the do- a doctor called me on the phone then after he stays there all night and she goes yeah it's like the X-ray his stomach is he's getting a little worse stomach's getting I don't know is that, or it's, it's 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 if there's something in there it's not moving so like maybe there's nothing in there mm-hmm. maybe it's inflammation. And I, and I and I'm like, but I'm talking to doctors now, and I'm like I'm like, okay, so if there's something in there, it's like, it's like, like, like last time it was a clump of grass and it was moving real slow. I just like, yeah, if this is if this is a foreign object, and you said he eats a lot of foreign objects, it's like, yeah, he ate a clump of grass at one point. Like, but but it's but not extra, it's not moving. X-ray would show if he ate so a baseball. Here's it, would the it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't it would, it would it, I mean I like so they they give me three choices. Endoscopy. And then another, there's another choice that was like an endoscopy, but it's like they put something down his nose or something. And like, like both of those choices involved keeping him the way he was and getting more information, which now that I know, I made the horriblest, most fucking awful choice. Like, I just, I want to cry. Like, but, but, but they, don't, they don't recommend anything. You ask them, do, what do you recommend? Well, I thought, you know, and they might as well say out loud, like, well, I don't want to get sued. It's your dog. 
You know, yeah, it's like, so this whole system is based on two things, total disrespect for the layman and total burden on the layman with any kind of fucking risk. Like, 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 like oh, we, 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 we think you're an idiot and, uh, because we went to two years of, of, of dog school or something. <laughs> Um, and, and, but, but so there's that, which is true. I'm two years dumber than you or whatever the fucking associate's degree you have that me, has you working at midnight at a veterinary hospital. And, and anybody who's watching, who's going like, oh, my cousin works at a veterinary hospital. I'm a veterinarian. I'm in school. Like, Take your personal story and just shove it all the way up your fucking dumb ass. Because like the fact that something is connected to your life doesn't mean that you're outraged. And it doesn't mean that you have anything to contribute to the conversation. Otherwise, every time people were stupid or had to deal with stupid people... I'd go. I'd lose my fucking mind because I'm a fucking expert in that. Okay, so shut the fuck up. I don't care if you're a veterinarian and you're a fan of the show and you're disappointed in my fucking closed-minded shit. It's closed-minded because I'm fucking upset. And shut the fuck up. Stick your whole life up your ass. Like stick it all the way up. And I hope it hurts going in. And then and then don't like thread it through your mouth so that you have a cosmic experience. Like don't just sh then. I want you to stumble around your front yard with bandages on your arms where their IVs were staring drug addled into the fucking cosmos wondering if the sound of the lawnmower is a threat or not because you're on so many painkillers and you can't speak English I want you to just like walk around for two weeks like 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 w wanting to lick a bandage on your stomach that that everyone keeps telling you not to and then finally just like 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 finally have to take a big diamond plated fucking serrated shit out of your of, of your own head and your own life out of your stupid ass i'm in fucking pain and so is my dog so shut up i fucking hate veterinarians i hate myself I, I hate, I, I just, I, I'm filled with hate. And I went to my therapist and I'm like, I'm filled with hate. Okay, I'm filled with rage and shame. And she's like, well, do this. And I'm like, okay. And I cried a little. Like, like she's like, well, just, oh, she says, yell at the chair. Like Clint Eastwood. Like, like, like <laughs> I'll come sit next to you. Like, she's like, okay, the veterinarian's in the chair. And go ahead and yell. And I go, I'm not going to yell. I'm, I'm in therapy to stop yelling. You fucking nuts. Like, 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 and, and she's like, what? I don't know. You're, you're not in therapy to stop yelling. You're in therapy to handle your emotions. I, I like, like, well, I'm not going to, uh, you may think it's cute or therapeutic to, to yell, but I, I don't, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to yell. For, you, 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 your office is in a fucking apartment building in, in Las Feliz. There's a yoga class next door and there's a, and she's like, well, let me check about that. She goes, nope, no yoga class. You know, like, 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 like did, did you just fart? Was that a was that the chair? Yeah, I just farted and it sounded really loud. <laughs> was it really a fart? Yeah, it was, and it was stinky too. <laughs> Dan, what I want you to do right now is I want you to yell at Spencer's fart. Well, I don't know where it is. Oh God, it's in my no. <laughs> uh, so so and then she goes like you know who will really like it is the psychiatrist upstairs I'm like oh the, the guy that used to be in your bigger office or is now in your bigger office I like like so so she doesn't mind me yelling so I just I talk to the chair and I go like I you know I vent a lot of the stuff that I just vented and then at a certain point yeah I guess if I want to I can go Aah! Aah! um and I do that and she's like okay now now like talk about what's right underneath that. I, I, she said, "How do you feel?" I said, "I said, I said one thirty second better, like like one like 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 one thirty twoth, you know, like not even and and, it, and oop, it's already filled back up." But she's like, "She's like, well, wait, what's underneath that? Is there something else? Because it's if it's not all rage, if doing that doesn't help, that means that you got rid of the rage layer. What's underneath there?" And she was right about that. I don't think my therapist is a bad therapist. I, I like like I, there was shame underneath there, and so I was like, "I feel shame because I like." I have to take care of this animal. Like, that's my job. The animal can't express itself. I have one fucking job. And it's, you know, and I started explaining why I was ashamed of myself. And and I started weeping. And, and then and she's like, now how do you feel? And I'm like, 230, you know, now a total of 1 16th better. All right. Oh, and now it's filled back up. And she's like, okay, let's, let's go outside. Uh-oh. She kicked your ass? She fucking beat the shit out of me. She <laughs> she hit me with it was a it was a 
and it was a it was a it was a they live John Carpenter style fight. So it ended uh, up uh, I had to pay extra because it was long. Yeah, yeah. I actually paid her extra to do that. <laughs> put the, put the sunglasses on. No, she makes me. She, she I don't say makes me. I I did it. Partly because I was like, you really think? I bet you think. I I I felt like I was like game theory. She thinks this is like Goodwill Hunting. Like, oh, Dan Harmon's afraid to walk up and down his the sidewalk in his neighborhood in front of Matt Bronger and uh, Amy Mann and Pat Oswalt and Edgar Wright, like uh, getting their coffee and and. Uh, uh, yeah, he's 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 not. John, gonna, John Ham is getting us. He's not going to do this in front sandwich. of John Ham, and uh, and I'm like, fuck! I did whatever she did twice as much. She's like like wiggling her arms like Noodle Man and like like walking like the keep on trucking uh, drawing uh, <laughs> by Crumb, and I, and, I, and I'm like, yeah, it's like silly walks. Like I was just like like okay, so you walk silly. She's like, you feel you feel that you feel that. And I'm like, yeah, I. I <laughs> I don't know, man. What was she trying to get you to feel? In that I don't moment? know. Like, like it was like the energy. There's energy in your body, and there's like the the idea was like because I kept saying I don't know where to put this rage, like because I have I have a couple holes in my wall at home from when Fiv was sick, the cat, and because uh, it's like there comes a point where you don't know how to express. Like you have rage and shame that you don't know where to put it. It seems like there is no, like, I'm a very sheltered person. Like, I don't have a lot of feelings that I don't know how to get rid of in a proper way. But, like, like intense levels of rage and shame above a certain voltage, there's no, it's just like, I, and I just like, yeah, we, I, I still don't, you can feel it, you feel it in your heart, behind your eyeballs, in your fists. Like, you feel like you want to beat something. You want to kill. What, what is your shame about? Like, that, that you let Nigel down? Yeah. By by hiring people to stab him? <laughs> or 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 before that like or you you do you feel responsible for why he got whatever he got? No. Cuz you found out it was what? It, it wasn't uh, he didn't eat something. It was like an he allergy. He has or he has a condition called IBD, but you know, the, at this point whatever like I, he's that the thing that 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 he is sick at home with right now is a fucking stab wound in his stomach it's not what he went in with what he what he went in with is apparently a, a condition called IBD I get I, I don't know Irritable why bowel disorder I don't I don't know if that's what it stands for it's basically like allergies food allergies like they say he ate something and it I think it could build up for a year like so it just kind of fuck around with his diet and stuff like it's that it's it's doubtful that he ate it's no that's not true it's possible that he ate some grass that he ate last time or that 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 or some milk thistle or some species of fucking california kumquat that he fucking like found in a backyard and like like it's possible that he ate one thing that like shocked his system immediately it's also possible that over a year of having a little bit of chicken or or snail uh, c- c- corpse or whatever they you know it's like oh this this food's got tbds and this food's got ib gays and like like ib gays tbds uh, is good um yeah. it, it, it's like like it what, could, should, what it, should we call this disease uh, let's call of course t- by the way let's call everyone, everyone's, everyone's so full of advice too <laughs> like 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 and, and it's just like i don't i don't i don't, don't want to say take your advice and shove it up your ass like but I just i just want you to observe things from my perspective when your dog eats a bunch of grass and has to have it surgically removed from his from his intestines, I I I think I've already heard by now that dogs eat grass when they're sick to induce vomiting. I've also heard that that's fucking horse shit and that dogs that eat grass end up sick from it. Please shut up now. It doesn't change anything being told this stuff. You're not really helping anybody because you had a sick dog once. I don't mean you should be ashamed of yourself. I just, I just, just shut up. Um, I, 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 like, 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 I, there, it's a, it's a fucking dog that starts shaking and vomiting. You take them into idiots who are smarter than you, and and you, you, you're given a choice between three doors, and one has a scalpel on it. You choose the scalpel, and they cut them open, and they go, up, oh, nothing, sorry. Yeah, uh, he's got food allergies. Zip, zip, so, 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 and now, and now the dog's on, uh, you know, on on doggy painkillers, and like you can't touch him without him like crying, and like you just you just have to spoon feed him like little uh, you know pieces of dog food that'll barely eat, and just, you, like like and you, know, you know you give him little little spoonfuls of grass. 
and you have nothing to think about that entire time except what you did wrong. You, you can you can run from your mistakes. Everything else you can you can fix by playing Minecraft. You know, I, you I had a dog that kept eating grass and would not stop eating grass. Loved grass. Favorite favorite thing in the world. Ate grass all day, all night, and was constantly bummed out and constantly puking. It's like, hey, like like we'll let you sort this out. Like like you're you're an idiot. Also, when that dog was little, because we got this dog in New York. We would be in Central Park, and favorite food? Horse shit. The fucking handsome cabs that would go <laughs> to take married couples down the lane. Yeah, you know, Nigel and, and uh, giant horse apples. And this dog just loved eating. Just just couldn't get enough horse shit. Nigel and, and Harvey. The dog seemed so happy, and we didn't like want to stop the dog from being happy, but it was really embarrassing. It's like, what is what's what's your dog's problem? Nigel and Harvey every morning, they. Uh, they they bark at the the neighbor's cat dash uh the 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 uh, cute little cute little black and white cat um that i never told my neighbors i accidentally caught in a humane trap when i was trying to catch a raccoon that was eating all my dog food um wait wait sorry you go back a i, I went sorry, over to raccoon. i went over to my neighbor's house once and i was like oh that's your cat and i was like the thought balloon i was like i caught your cat in a trap once and let it go like there's I, a raccoon once yeah i was I, there was a raccoon that still is. the doggy oh, so you eating. almost you almost murdered their cat by and almost murder no, it you, you i definitely I, 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 I certainly made it it gave it the most miserable night of its life, depending on when it uh, oh, so it's, took it's, the bait that was bear, set for a, a raccoon, trapping. which is a bunch of a dog trap. Is like they, you got caught in a cage, and it was a humane trap. It wasn't going to. It just came out of the backyard like I got a, I got my prey, and it was uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, a very uh, very very adorable outdoor well, cat named Dash. Uh, also, bad name for a cat. Dash, if you can't get out of a fucking trap. No, oh, come on. You yeah. think trap sense would be a part of? Uh, Anyways, the dogs. The dogs. Pick. When I'm working out in the morning, uh, uh, they they bark at Dash. Dash comes out the yard, and I'm always like making fun of it because I'm like, you, you, at this point, like, what do you think? Remember we were talking about like, like, what are the dogs? What are the dogs saying to the cat? Well, I just realized what they say to the cat because I'm talking to Alice in the, d- the dog sitter about like what they. She's like, she's like, you know, they they fucking. They love going out in the front yard because they know the cat shit's out there, and like they they race each other to the cat shit. Like they, so it's like it turns out when the dogs are barking at the cat through the front window, they're like poop. They're like yelling at the Far- Wells Fargo wagon. Like, like <laughs> I ah, hope I got my right. raisins from Fresno. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my, is my how to draw book here yet? Wait, so make it make a nice juicy one for me, so Cynthia. They're, they're all up in that cat shit. <laughs> yeah, they like, run out to the spot where he eat, shits, and, and the they they fight over it like raptors. What's what's in that cat poo that's so delicious? I think the dogs. dogs, because they smell so intensely, you have to think you do the backwards math and go. That means that if they could smell shit. Which they surely can, because yes. we can. But they smell the ingredients in there. They the, they have to. They're the, super like, tasters. God gave them noses that could smell, uh, 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 the concern of a of a poodle a, an hour away, and, and, and or that can smell their way home to 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 if they if they if they if they get trapped in a U-Haul or whatever the stories are, they can smell a forest fire in 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 Utah. And, and, and so and we can smell a turd. So so then God's like, well, they're gonna go nuts about the turds. They're gonna just kill themselves. Like their nose will explode. So then he's like, well, what? I can't make their nose less sensitive. I mean, I really want these things to live by their nose. Uh, all right, well, I'll just make them love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, they, so that's why when they meet each other, they're like, "Let me st- check out that asshole." We, 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 Whoa, we, wow, you got one coming, don't you? We, I got, it, it's cresting. I can see it. Like, like Barbara, uh, Cody's dog came over. By the way, Nigel's dog's got. He's got. He's he's. You know, dogs come home from surgery. They're constipated. It, it, it constipated in air quotes because he, he just doesn't want to squat to take the shit. He's got a he's got a fucking knife wound in his stomach. But long story short. Uh, he's got a fucking little diamond tip, you know, turd. Like, like you can see it if you look. Like, I, it's like, I like and then Barbara, uh, Cody's dog comes over and she's just like right up in that ass. I'm like, well, there's a Wait, so there's dogs, a turd coming out. Oh, do dogs yeah. like other dogs shit? I, yeah, I, I mean, I, yes, they I, do. They I, like I, shit. I don't think I've ever seen a dog eat another dog's shit. 
Oh dog, yeah, no, I don't. Well, dog, I don't. Do I dogs mean, eat their, dogs don't eat their own shit? I do, 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 dogs that were raised in puppy mills. Do, do dogs eat their own shit if they've. Were, they, they, that's a heavy sign of abuse because they. They, 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 well, no, because they the dogs don't like to shit where they eat. So dogs that are forced to shit where they eat eat their shit to keep, the, especially mother dogs, to keep the um, puppy mill cage uh, sanitary. It's really sad. If you if you if you get a dog from the, that's that's eating its own shit when you when you when, you know it's a, there's a that's a red flag that like it's. Uh, Learned that behavior or personally experienced trauma. Let's get away from this animal shit and bring up Rob Schraub. Rob Schraub, everybody. You know what dogs uh, like eating shit the most? German Shepherds. Rob Schraub to the stage, everybody. Oh, I didn't. Oh, my God. Holy shit. He's been un, un cheapy peeping. Can we can we end this now? Reasonably can I be your priced. Friend now? Can, we be friends? Talk? can we be friends again? What does that iPad say? Is there an inscription? I love you, love Steve. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, what? How How worth it. Mean, when you order an iPad, you can you can fill out an inscription thing and a, like. But why? And did it's it? free. Why did it become "I love you, love Steve"? That that smacks of uh, some. There was a like a little redundancy thing there. Like I filled out a joke, mm-hmm. and then then Steve also did. Right, and it's it's like if you put "by Dan" and then it's like "by Dan" again because it automatically puts that. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know why Steve did that. Couldn't Steve have just written "I love you"? He could have done a lot of different Steve. things. Well, th- but I mean, let's run through some other things Steve could have done. <laughs> He could have got a V8. I have a question. Had okay. a V8. Am I released <laughs> from this this fucking weight? Can I can I can I have my life back? That's can something you call only you up can your answer. dogs, your Twitter dogs and your Instagram commenters. Can you call them off, please? Now don't, that I've given your property back. Don't you Thank do you it? Thank you for allowing don't me. Don't give in. To to. To try it, says it out. Dan sucks on it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, don't, it does. don't even start. I'm trying to end this, this, it's, this, this cruel. It says I actually comedy. am a cheapy peepee. See, you that's know, crazy. Why would you even do that? I didn't do that. Well, we know like you were the last word. person to own it. Spencer, you know I don't like that word. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and it I is didn't. one word, and and I want it. I want it. I it's want two this. words. It's one word, hmm. and I want this to be over with. Will you please f- set me free? Let me. Can you unshackle me with it? Can, can you do that? Can Is there some sort of ritual, or some cleansing that we can go can through? Can you unshackle me? Can I get unshackled? I know what because, I'm uh, because I'm famous for my control over my fans, uh, and my fans are famous for loving me. And, and they do what you tell them to. They're <laughs> yeah. famous that's for a, listening to what you yes. say yeah. and agreeing with it. But you're, you're in kind of a quicksand, Shrab, because people shrub you all the time. Because you, you could. I don't mind that. I actually like that because they always do it wrong, and I find it entertaining. <laughs> it's hard to shrub right. It's yeah. Hard, it's hard to do shrubbing I, I funny. Find, yeah. How do you Only, shrub wrong again? I Because I, 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 I see it happening Let's all the time. try it. Shrub, tweet something. No, I can't. I, I, you got me too stoned before. Just tweet something out. No. In like in. I don't. I don't have the right glasses. Improvise to type. it. You don't have to actually type it. Like just like fire off a. Like compose uh, a tweet mentally. Fire off a mental like a vocal tweet right now, and then we're gonna try we're to. We're gonna shrub bad it shrub and prove it. That it's hard to shrub things right. Why don't you just read? Why don't you just read one of my? Just tweet a tweet. Hey uh, everybody, come and watch uh, Harmon Town. See, it's perfect. Um. Oh, are you going to be at Harmontown? Yes. Now, is that him doing it wrong, or is I it was trying yeah, to? Yeah, that's doing that, it wrong. That's, 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 that's not a... That's that was bad, right? Not, not, not to slam. put you under too much pressure, but can, you, can now can Spencer tweet something and, and you do it right? Just to show yeah, us? Spencer, fight, uh, fight out know, a Spencer maybe, tweet, and then Shrob's going to Shrob it. it I, I'm very... Uh, it depends. Sure, I'll okay. try it. Spencer. Hey, look, I just got this new stack of Betamax tapes. Did you get any beta minis? <laughs> there you go. Do you see the difference? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. 
Yeah. But somebody might extrapolate from that and go, oh, uh, I get it. So you need to blah, blah, blah. It's, it, I think what you're, all you're saying is, is it, 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 people try to, people try to be, they try to, they try to reduce nuance to formula yeah. and it yeah. doesn't work. They also, they also, I don't know. They just don't know how to do it right. It's about timing and it's about, it's picking the right tweet. I'm a watch and wait predator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're, you're, you're like a jaguar on a limb. Correct. You're, yeah. you're, you, you pounce. Can yeah. we get a you t-shirt your prey you of can't that? Just, you can't just do any, anything. Rob Schraub, watch and wait predator. Right. Well, I can't control my fans, Schraub. However, but you, I can you, control myself. Yes. So I will say to you, thank you for bringing the iPad back. I wouldn't. I. 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 I you. You. You had established that you weren't using it anyway. So. It, it, Which is kind of cheap. I, I appreciate you you bringing it back. Otherwise, I would feel a little bad because I just want you to be happy. And I would do anything to ensure that you keep coming back to the show because it's been very helpful to me going through a transitional phase of my own. I like having you here. You've been a good friend of mine for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anything were to happen to either of us uh, uh, without me having expressed that, it would be... I don't know why I have to do this cadence where I'm like Richard Lewis when I'm expressing affection. Ira Glass. But, uh, you know. <laughs> he does that. It's a, that so that, so for me, I, so like, I, I riffed the phrase cheapy peepy. It was insensitive. Uh, it, 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 and it, it's, it's reduct, reductivist. It's and, sexist. And it's been, it's been now um, co-opted by some of the worst kinds of people, people who like to see others, others feel pain. A basket of deplorables. I can't think of a worse word to apply to another human being, period. Because it's so false. I think of you as a very magnanimous shranimous. <laughs> so you Thank like you. that? You like Thank that? You. you like that one? Thank you, David. Magnanimous yeah, let's make, let's make that the new meme. Remember when Magnanimous Harris Whittles Shranimous. Harris Whittles did the there was like it was a ro it wasn't really a ro you had a birthday yeah. and you had people that you like perform on your birthday and you showed some stuff that you're proud of like old shit yep and uh, you had it was kind of like the beginning of Harmontown because you did you went up and you did went, I go up even I don't think yeah, I got, you went did. up yeah you did yeah you did did I yeah what did I do well you commented that, that Sarah Silverman was there back. <laughs> like it, it was it was Kamel Harris, Sarah, and you. You oh. closed it. Was I a dick to Sarah? I, no, I, no, 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 no. We hung out backstage, right? We were yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. Uh, but but you just said, oh, I, I didn't know Sarah was gonna. I didn't know <laughs> I would be following Sarah Silverman here. You oh, know, like, okay. It was like that, you know. I don't know. Well, anyways, well, Harris, Harris did the Harris Harris's set was really funny because yeah. he uh, he 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 went up and said like, oh, well, I'm not gonna, you know. I'm not gonna roast Rob because Rob's very sensitive. You know, joke writers go to negative place. So like, like roast jokes are the funniest jokes. So, but Rob's a very sensitive person. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to roast Rob, but in a positive way. And then he he did a whole set of like just jokes about Rob is so such a good person and blah blah blah. And I was like, it was really it was really really funny because it it was it was actually even. To me, even more abusive because he was calling you a pussy yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a gigantic general sense, and, and and making a big show of kid gloving you, which is actually a great way to to yeah. to hurt someone very deeply. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't he wasn't uh, he didn't say anything untrue. <laughs> Does anybody own the tape of the roast for your birthday, Dan, that we did? I don't know. At that Armenian restaurant in the valley? <laughs> I don't know. Because my memory of that was that it was the funniest thing that's ever happened, but I'm sure it's not. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's not. Comedy doesn't age well, but what was funny about it, which is the thing that we do remember, is that I turned 30, we had a roast, and we specifically were like, well, what if we, what if no one shows up? We're like, well, why do we want anyone to show up? All we want to do is is have a dais like like we don't care so it was like three like plus ones like 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 wives husbands girlfriends like who were like like had to sit there next to a salad bar in the back of this armenian restaurant and watch 10 
guys like just <laughs> piss themselves laughing while they while they for no reason at all into a microphone because there was no one to address except each other just and facing an, a, 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 an empty room like like just did did, did roast jokes about uh, about Dan it was a roast of Dan Harmon but as is the tradition it was everyone just like did one Dan Harmon joke and then, <laughs> and then, and then ha- hammers on everybody in the room. ripped everybody else yeah it's pretty fun I mean, does that tape exist? Do we know if anybody has that? I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I have to imagine that if it exists, it's filled with homophobia and racism and so, you know yeah. like things that don't, don't age well. Because not only is it a roast, but it's a roast from 15 years ago. Yeah. And it's and it's and it wasn't made for television. So I'm sure if we found it uh, for our own purposes. Sorry, yeah, I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying we yeah, released exactly. we this to the general public. I'm saying, do we have the yeah, yeah. You know, this this that was a symptom of my disease that you're like, I wonder if that tape exists and I'm immediately leaping to, oh, the, the world would hate it. And I'm like, well, that's, that's not about the world. It's no. about our friendship. We could watch it and then burn it in a trash can afterwards. Yeah, or just keep it and wait till it's funny again in 50 years. <laughs> 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 when 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 people are so equal and free that everyone's like, that is hysterical. That, so that's what you called you call a gay joke. The, so, so the joke was just that everyone was yeah. gay. Yeah. And then it turned out to be true. <laughs> I get it. You joke about Chris Tallman. He's like, yeah, Chris Tallman, Dan had a joke. Chris Tallman's bad with the ladies. Uh, Chris, we have a, all of our friends, we have a betting pool going on. What's going to last longer, your virginity or Saturn? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw A Quiet Place. You hear about this Quiet Place movie? I heard about it, but then I forgot about what it's about. What it's, is it? Uh, it's about well, a quiet place. It, it, Thank you, Spencer. There's like. I'm right. There, it's in like like I don't know. I think it's like twenty. It's like it's, it's like in five years the world. Oh is, oh oh! This is this is this is yeah. this is Dunder Mifflin guy. Uh, Dunder if Mifflin. you if you make a sound, you get eaten by the yeah language. yeah yeah. So the first like half hour of it is sign is language, silent and sign language and whispering, and it's really effective. It's really I I, I really enjoyed it quite. How, a bit. So I want to ask a question about it sure. as a sci-fi horror fan. Yeah. Like, and as a big rules guy, you know, yeah. we talked a lot about zombie movies with Kirkman, and like, so I'm, I, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say if the answer is yes, oh, the, the movie sucks or whatever, but, but I just like, I, what I will do is throw a parade if the answer is no. Are there inconsistencies in the rules of these things? I.e., like a lot of times in movies like that where there's rules that are so clear cut, it's like, is there a scene where the person is like in the corner and it's like <gasps> you know the foley person is like making their breath dramatic but it's like well come on you did a whole scene earlier about how it literally a pin dropping could have brought them uh i i i thought it would they you might watch it and go hey shrub i can hear her breathing you know i thought it was very consistent i thought it was a very simple uh rule to this uh creature that that you make any noise? I mean, they spend a long time setting up the world before they ever introduce the other thing. It's a, it's like they're walking around barefoot. There's they have like these pre-made sand uh, paths. Oh wow, they, fun. So they're not like stepping on twigs and right, right. going through the uh, uh, forest and stuff. And it's just it is a great um, it's a great monster. That's new, which I really like. Do you get to see him before the when yeah, you when yeah you, you get to see you well, yeah you, you, yeah you get you, a spoiler pretty, probably a decent look at him you know is it I, true Rob that you've been asked to make a sequel to it called Don't Make a Peepee? Is there if a, I started <laughs> crying right now, would you feel bad? <laughs> that or would be would, awesome. Would you laugh? I'm I'd just laugh. Curious. It's more. It's more. It says more about. Well, you I can't wait to see it. I mean, I love. I it's la- really I, good. I wish I all saw, movies. I saw were. Isle of Dogs. Stop. Uh, motion oh, that's uh, Wes Anderson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I kind of agree with. I, I can't remember if it was Lauren Duca or, uh, like tweeted like, "Well, I want to see a Wes Anderson movie about animals," but and then a list of like, "Are you <laughs> like." Is there going to be? I mean, it just seems like a setup for a fucking heartbreak. Like, no, it, it, it. There's, it's, it's a really good. I really liked it a lot. I think you, as a Starburns uh, co-owner, might want to check it out because it's. I thought it was just beautifully designed, and it. <clears throat> there's some off-putting stuff, you know, with with dog. St- I just am very sensitive to that. So, but I think it's is done. It, sorry, is it animation? 
Yeah, it's stop motion yeah, it's animation. Like thir- yeah. And uh, it, they do a, <coughs> they do a bunch of stuff up front that that I kind of was like like ugh god ooh. And I think they're saying like this if you brought kids to this you should probably take them out you know because uh-huh. it's but the voice talent is great. Um, I just think it's it's a beautiful, well designed film. I love that Wes Anderson lo- loves stop motion. Is it literally yeah. stop motion or is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, that's great. It it I mean like the fur's all moving. It looks clunky. I mean like it's like uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, Mr. Fox movie that he did. I uh, can now admit that I haven't seen it yet because um, the guy I would have offended that I would have been working with I think is is now now has to. Tyke, the movie Tyke is doing for us, the Bubbles movie, um, uh, uh, its co-director was the co-director of Mr. Fox. I haven't seen Mr. Fo- Fantastic Fox, man. <laughs> I've never seen it. it. It's That one's fun, too. I mean, I just, I, I love, I love stop motion animation. I just love the model building. I think it's just really great. It's amazing. Speaking of segues, the reason why, you know, Ta- Taika Waititi, uh, world's most sought after director, uh, uh, you know, of course his next movie is for me. And, uh, <laughs> well, after a quick hop over to Prague where he's going to make his amazing, like, uh, Hitler movie, but, uh, the, but he's going to... Is it called the amazing Hitler movie? <laughs> it's, I mean, I think, I think it's going to be truly like, like he's going to, it's, it's going to be pretty uh, his description of the movie, like to me, like made me go. Sh- I, it, made, it made me really jealous for the first time in a long time of a of another guy my age. It's like, like I was just like, ah, God, you're just fucking doing what you want. Like, it really like made me spiritually jealous as opposed to like, oh, he has a Tesla. You know, it was like, like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm creatively jealous of someone. Like, like, you just finished your Thor movie, and now you're gonna go make this fucking thing. But and so I think people are gonna be blown away by it. But then, and then he's gonna do our Michael Jackson monkey movie over here. I know, I know that chimpanzees are apes, not monkeys. Put your fucking life up your ass. Oh man, write us in until a shitty veterinarian has to cut it out and see how you feel. <laughs> write us in if chimpanzees aren't monkeys. Um, write us in, and the election of the problem is they they look like, they look exactly like. Monkeys. I mean, yeah, let's just call they them all like monkeys, monkeys for Christ's sake. Like you didn't know what I meant. Yeah, like you didn't know what I meant. Why is language so living? Um, exactly. We but but the uh, we we're getting evicted by this piece of shit studio, Starburns. I don't know who's running this fucking place, but we're leaving Starburns Castle. And we mentioned it last week. Yeah. And if you can't hear the silent cries of the audience we're not allowed to have in here, um, believe me, they're they're happening in the ether with that ghost bee from what, our second what's, sketch. What's, what's the next step for us? What's well, I'm pre- kind of excited about it. We toured a place. I don't know. I don't want to speak out of school. So I'll, you know, we'll... We went over there and looked at it. Is it the one kind of downtownish? Yeah, it's kind of downtown. It's funny. It's like I met with an agent, and he's like, "If you guys need a new space, there's this place, and it's the same place." Okay. Yeah. I mean, I oh, it's popping. I don't. Off. I don't know why it would be secret, but just in case, I don't. It's wanna... called. It rhymes with. Maples. No, it doesn't. It rhymes with it Maple's mentor. He's lying. It's the Staples Center. We're going to the Staples. He's Center. lying. It's not that. We haven't locked it down yet, and I, don't say Staples Center. I yet. think that our LA fans will be excited. Would be excited to be able to come see us, even if it was in a shithole. This place is not a shithole. Um, it's it's really nice, and it's uh, it seems like it's for it's you know it's it's run by good people. And I I, 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 th- I think our next home very likely will be like like um, you know a, a rebirth of this show as a as a as as not what it was at meltdown like a new it's like we were something at meltdown then we came here and we're like kind of building to god knows what and then collapsed into this cocoon phase where we found out we don't care if anyone is in the audience which is a cool thing to find out but the reason it's cool is because it allows you to miss the audience and then maybe we can now go in front of an audience again and like not be i won't be as fucking Maybe I can be a little more Spalding Gray, a little less. Uh... Speaking of audiences, Dan, well, while I remember this, uh, we have to t- talk about we're doing a show in Boston. Oh, shit. 
Uh, Friday, June twenty second, will be the Friday, awesome June the Wilbur Theater. Have you, have you ever awesome. been? We're going to be at the Wilbur Wicked Retired Fium. Yeah, it's good. Uh, <laughs> the show's going to be Wicked uh, Retired Fium. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a wicked pisser. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be. It's probably going to be. Uh, the, the Boston uh, Herald is calling it the most retarded show coming to. Uh, and that and that publication, they use that phrase and they mean good. Yeah, no, they, they rate it on one to five uh, retarded. retarded people. Yeah. <laughs> this has five retarded people on it. It's a five. It's a five retarded show. It's going to be wicked. Seconds. There'll probably be some pissa. Wait, and, uh, Wilbur Theater. Uh, uh, there's going to be lobster rolls, and it's going to be good. Uh, that's at the Wilbur Google Theater. Which I, I've played the Wilbur Town, Theater before. It's an awesome Master, theater. It's Boston. a really, really fun venue. Have we have we been at the Wilbur with this show? Oh no. yeah, loads. Of Where times. were we when we went to Boston last? That was on our tour, and uh, Adam we Goldberg's brother of, came up. We, oh, that, like we, we were in Somerville. Yeah, oh. Somerville. We were, we were at like Jay's Laugh Station. Or so we've never like been in Boston proper. 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 Yes. Yeah. We've never been in Boston retarded. Yeah, no, we were we were not wicked or a pisser. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But that, so we could get beaten up or achieve independence. Or both. Or, yeah. yeah. I mean, probably both. Yeah, That's, exactly. Wow. Or asked to share in casual racism. <laughs> <laughs> so come see us and kill us at the uh, Boston uh, Wilbur Theater on Friday, June 22nd. You got to eat that mic, you oh, fucking... Uh, also, yeah. uh, Long Wicked Island. <laughs> don't. Don't. <laughs> My sister's retarded <laughs> with a hard R, so... Also, we're going to be in Long Island somewhere... Yeah, at the, after a, at the Aviation Museum? What the, what the fuck is it? <laughs> we're going to be in in the air. Uh, the 23rd, we're going to be in Long Island. And it's... Uh, Google Harmontown, Long Island, Ticketmaster. Yeah, go online and do it like a regular person, you pieces of garbage. Yeah, uh, yeah that came out wrong. That yeah, came out wrong. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not pieces of garbage. They're good and that's people. because... Wait, what, 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 what is it? Why are we... Not, I don't mean to say why are we doing that like we shouldn't be. I just mean like... We're at an aviation... Oh, we're, do, we're, do, we're going to do that... Um, is that a charity thing? That planetarium yeah. thing. Oh, the planetarium thing at the aviation flim flam. It's a charity event for what? Yeah. Stem cell research. No. <laughs> <laughs> Science, technology, <laughs> education, and medicine. We're do, we're doing we're doing we're we're doing a stem cell. We're doing a benefit show. That it's all the stem cells. Sure. It's uh, all the stem cells you can eat. Better, <laughs> better find out before the show. We're pretty sure it's about science, education, and women, and, and that's, that's those are ingredients medicine. we like. It's like a casserole. Right. Like you can't go too wrong. And it's aviation themed, so we can actually talk about going to the moon finally. And get, well, get also this like shit we done. get to do a show in a planetarium. Yeah. Oh, uh, are um, we gonna turn the lights down and like play Pink Floyd and shit and look at the look at the ceiling? I mean, we I, will, yeah. And we're gonna bring pot <laughs> brownies. Let's, um, let's get there early and, and 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 work with the lighting crew and see what the, what we can do. We're gonna get there early and work with the lighting crew crew and see what we can do. And also, if you're naked, Rob Schraub has some T-shirts. Oh uh, yeah, T Public Rob Schraub <laughs> Schraub, Schraub Home Video. New T-shirt design came out last week. Yeah, what does that say? Chinese murder van. <laughs> really burning up the charts. All the proceeds go to purchase a Chinese murder van. Right. We want to support We're going to get rid of the mean streets yeah. of Burbank. All proceeds go to benefiting the... People in Boston who are truly wicked retarded. Right. It's actually it's kind of like the that that charity where they they go to they rescue dogs from like uh, countries that that where they where they eat them. But like we're going to China. We're, we're we we want to buy a van, one of these Chinese murder vans. Right. right. We, we just want to take it off the streets of China. We're gonna fucking pimp it out and yeah. roll it up and down the streets of Burbank. Because yeah. it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a new show on the Learning Channel called Pimp My Chinese Murder Van. Right. Yeah. Everybody knows there's a constitutional right to own a Chinese murder van. <laughs> because in America it's called an ambulance. Right. Like Rick It's called a veterinarian van. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Rick Ashley. Rick Ashley. Who's that? Who's who's Rick Ashley? I a symptom of your stroke? <laughs> 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 Rick, never, never, Astley. Give you never get Astley. Rick Astley. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Risk ass. Rick, 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 he's Rick, having a stroke. Risk oh no! I, I always wondered when we were living in Milwaukee. I always wondered, like, like Shrab and I would joke. We were in our twenties. Like, like, oh, we do. Every once in a while, we'd allude to, as friends do, the image of us on a on a, on a porch in rocking chairs, drinking <laughs> lemonade. And, Pretty This cool. is like, it. What, yeah. And, and th but this is it. This it is. is. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at our, our, our pictures. I think we got great beards. And just, 
glasses. <laughs> I mean, this is what we would dress yeah. up as. I like this, though. This yeah. is good. I yeah. like this porch. I mean, we, I'm, I'm fine with living this long. Yeah. What's the future of this beard, Rob? Are you, you going to let it just do its own thing? I got uh, my first, um, I don't know, from... Kate, uh, which is probably the death of it. I mean, I'm I'm fine. I mean, she was like, yeah, I'm fine with it. It's cool. You know, it's all right, man. Man, you look good. That's what Sophie's mom said. Mom said you look handsome. Your impression of your wife sounds like Howard Stern's impression of a black person. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. This hey, is, hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> This is me. That's real groovy, man. That's real groovy, man. I loved your, uh, your wife on Starsky and Hutch. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Shrav, you gonna pick up your socks? <laughs> I've been chipping <laughs> over your socks every morning. Pick up your socks. <laughs> all balled up, two sock wearing Yeah, so she finally. I got. I have a. I have a. Be careful what you wish for. Myth happening with my with Cody. Like she, the older I get. The longer my hair gets, the longer my beard gets. Like the, you know, she's she's just like I I like it. I, and then I was like I. She got bummed out when you sh- cut your beard. Off. I was trying to do a little trimming thing, and I I I did one of those things uh, uh, where I you know sh- like shave too much on one, and then I try to even it out. And you can you can hear about all of it on, on our friend Rob Tantrum's upcoming uh, album. <laughs> it has a rap about uh, an uneven shave. But uh, uh, Ch- church can't uh, wait for my hair to get gray. Like my hair is getting gray gradually, but church wants you want me to be an old man, don't you? Yeah, she 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 <laughs> actually she goes out of her way she just, to she, stress me out. So I just three, she, she sets a, a vibrating alarm so that she can wake up in time to be at the foot of your bed at three thirty in the morning holding a butcher knife. <laughs> It's just a, it's like watering a plant when you want your your man to get ro- white hair. She's just gonna gradually like Stephen King you. Have you seen Annihilation? Uh, no. Can you explain it to me? Yes. <laughs> it's oh, nine it's eleven. It's, it's pronounced an, a nine annihilation. 11? Have you seen a nine eleven? <laughs> what question do you have? What does it? I it's nine eleven, everybody. You know what that means? It's time to drink. Coors Light. <laughs> and pop some yes. hymns. Crack open a nice, cool, tall glass of me undies. I was talking to a Broadway composer. Uh, Lynn Manuel. No. no. Annihilation. Manuel Lynn. I won't say yes. I won't say no. <laughs> his, his Wario. <laughs> Lynn Manuel's Wario. <laughs> Manuel Lynn is <laughs> out there. Like, mm, Manuel I don't like the Constitution. Mm. My music is bad. <laughs> Ooh, dip, dip, it doesn't it's rhyme. It's going to be right? all country western about how the Constitution is bad. <laughs> um, Manuel Lynn. Uh, no, and I was, his uh, cat, Azrael. And, I, and, and, and he was talking about... Manuel he was ta- 11. He was telling a story about... Uh, <laughs> ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. No, go on. Tell yeah, us. He was telling a story great, about everybody. the timing of a thing. And he said... And then it's like, oh, it's just like Broadway people refer to 9-11... Like a lot because the history of Broadway was heavily in fact. So it's I, like don't don't just, break a leg. I did the joke where I, that's like, what they say before I, I, you go on stage oh, instead of uh, saying good luck. They got to say hit, yeah. uh, hit a tower. Nine eleven. No, that's 9/11. not nine eleven. It's just, in the timeline of Broadway. Broadway's ups and downs. Obviously, nine eleven is a marker in that timeline. <laughs> so I've already done that. There the, were nine ups and eleven downs on Broadway, and coincidentally, Broadway stopped on nine eleven. There's no Broadway anymore. <laughs> what? All right. It doesn't. I mean, I, sometimes I, I. Some, I'm from the future. Sometimes I bring something up and I'm like, God, I wish they'd just let me finish. And then sometimes I bring something up that I'm like, well, it's going to be conspicuous that I don't finish, but I'm glad they didn't let me finish. Which one was this? You should the, the finish. Ladder, the latter. The <laughs> latter. So uh, let's do the sketch. Let's do the uh, sketch with Shrab, the post office sketch. And the then uh, okay. uh, we've 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 worked on this a lot. I hope like, I, I'm off book. You guys are you guys. I'm good. I'm good. Well, it's a live show, so I mean, look. Part of the sometimes people break up, they start laughing, but those people get fired or yeah. or 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 stay on the show for 20 seasons. It depends on whether the wh- wh- whether they're popping. All right, sh- uh, sh- uh, I'm locking tonight. Chris, can we get lights down? Let's 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 do this. Let's do the post office sketch. Yeah, post office sketch. <laughs> Come 
Come in. It's a post office. <laughs> Excuse me. I'd like to mail it. Fuck yeah. Woo. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, he, uh, you can. Uh, Was that the studio audience? Mail whatever you want, sir. I'd like to mail this box here. Uh, okay, well, we need to weigh it. It's, uh... I'm not to weigh the box here. Is it a mock chair? Box chair. A box chair. Yeah. You gonna mail a box chair? Well, uh, look, I, I don't need to know what it is. Meteor mail. I, I am kind of a meteor man in the sense that I... <laughs> <laughs> meteor. <laughs> meteor man. In a media man. Uh, it's a meteor man. It sounds like you got a meteor man. Yeah. In the back. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, that's my that's my boss's office chair. It's a lot of people think that it's uh, him <laughs> farting, but oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> okay. Well, let's take that uh, meteor man. Behemoth chair, and uh, oh, it looks like that weighs about five pounds. And depending, depending on where, uh huh, uh huh, <laughs> depending on where you're mailing that, uh, will will we'll, if you filled out an address form? No, mm -mm, oh no. Well, then, <laughs> you, you should, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Such a long, long, casual, but also loud laugh. Whoa, whoa okay. They don't like being self-aware. All right. Yeah, all right. That's, all right. All right. Sounded like some of them didn't like it toward the end there. Uh, yeah. So let's fill out this form. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I need a pen. Right in your yeah, so here you go. Is a pencil. You just put your ad, put the address you want to send it to on one side, and the address that you're that you are sending it from on the other side. Mm. Wow, you really write you write so magically. Hey, huh? hey, I want mail a box, sir. What? This is a this is a series of 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 hash marks. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Hey, that's the wrong one. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're. You 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 have standards for yourself. <laughs> All right, come on. Well, now what do you mean? Just, continue the scene. You just judge. Continue the scene. It's been are we it's been waylaid. Are we fucking like, doing this? Trying to do cross scene? scene work are over here. Are we fucking here, like, doing this? After all that fucking talking about. <sighs> I'm sorry. I was. I, was, I can't work like this. You can't work like this. Just fucking end the scene. All right. Come in. It's a post office. <laughs> Honey, I thought you were going to be home after you mailed your box. Oh, mm. Cheryl Teague. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end because it's a sketch. Because he's got a crazy character, and it's crazy that he's married to a sexy yeah. model lady. My, okay, my there it is. Char the character <laughs> was. <laughs> you gotta. Can I? How much do, can I pay to get you high quality non sound I dog pre sample from sounddog.com fucking audio files? <laughs> we <laughs> like twelve k kbps <laughs> fucking sound. <laughs> Like, it sounds like my grandma is Skyping in the sound effects. <laughs> so long, like, if you were, yeah, listen to that laugh, like, is, like, pieced together. <laughs> Do that laugh again. Listen to the way, listen to the way they kind of trail off and lose interest in their own laughter. <laughs> Um, wait, okay. <laughs> they so, all went back to the punch press. Shrub, say something funny and then hit the button. When do you know when you're finished? Come on, press the... Jesus I mean, Christ. Wait, like, what the hell are you doing? You know? Which, which button? I've got, I've got loads of buttons. Well, no, press the, fuck button. the fucking you laugh button. button. Right. Obviously the fucking laugh button. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Right. That's... I we'll mean, try we'll try it again. We'll try it again. We'll try it again. We'll try it live. <laughs> <laughs> All right, say something funnier. Uh, well, I'm pimping me. 
Um, well, I'll take it to him. I'll, I'll, based on these seven, seven uh, no, that's uh, it's Spencer's it. in the middle of, of, of okay. leading an experiment right, of some okay. kind. Okay, Spencer, take over. Okay. Um, uh, I'm sticking with the laugh track button on this one. Okay. There was an explosion somewhere in New York, but uh, people think it might have been a Sal- Samsung Galaxy S8. Again, uh, the, I mean, the 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 president uh, tweeted today that he wants uh, the country to uh, uh, stop uh, 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 doing uh, bad things. Uh, uh, w- w- when reached for comment, he was at Stormy Daniels' house. <laughs> There's one guy in there that's, that's just crying. like, there's what, or is he slowly realizing that he's, he's like, boo, he's booing, right? There's that, one guy in there at the end sounds booing. like someone going, it might be like a, a murder. Is a, there a murder? A, a ghost or a zombie? When you get there? your cheap, uh, your cheap sound effects, like you, they're like, look, we can't. It's the same as like you get cheap tuna. There's going to be some dolphin in it. Like you, you, you get. <laughs> it's like it's like how in Poltergeist they used real skeletons. Yeah, that's yeah, why, yeah. The the uh, the, pi- the Pirates of the Caribbean had had they, they got some UCLA skeletons for a while. Yeah. They were like, well, you know, we'll fix it later. Like, but you know, like, they got away with it until they were caught selling arms to China. Uh, oh. well, it's I'd, been okay. 283 episodes to do that joke. <laughs> I mean, I really would like to outfit you with for our sketch segment. No, I've said that. I know, it's a, you it's know, not it's a, a terrible it's idea. Terrible. It's, it's the and it's like also, I want to say, like, at hindsight, it's awful. But we're we're going to be here for a couple more weeks. Like, we're not going to be up and running at the in front of the audience. But this is a rare opportunity. We're doing this. <gasps> we're doing a single That's camera right. podcast. And we could we could uh, we could have some fun with this and wear it the fuck out before right. we, we could do video bits. Well, we, not video bits, but like hmm. like just I'm just saying like au- au- audio bits like with that we're do- doing like fake sketches like our B sketch like we could have somebody doing like a little soundboard. Yeah, with, that, the, with the laughter. I like that idea. That's definitely. Fun. That's an atom bomb of an idea, Dan. All right. Well. Come back. You guys Wait. were talking about like cutting open people and cadavers and stuff like that earlier before I uh-huh. remember. That remind that reminded me of like in the Return of the Living Dead like special features. The production designer goes, goes like, "Oh, I wonder if I can tell this." So we went, you know, uh, Dan O'Bannon and I. We went to several funeral homes in Southern California where we were shooting it we for research to see what they look like on the inside the morgues and the and uh, and the funeral homes and every single time as we were leaving somebody would run out to the parking lot and go they're fucking they're fucking them they're fucking the bodies every night every night they're fucking them so when you die you go to the funeral home and Somebody's probably fucking you. <laughs> I have I have necrophilia questions. Okay. Shoot. And they're not based on shaming anyone because although it's Hold a, your head up high if you fuck dead people. Necrophilia is a tricky area because the rule it, the safe easy rule is don't fuck don't kink things. shame people if your oh. kink has no victim. It's a tough area, necrophilia. A dead person has not consented. They have loved ones. I don't know. Vandalism. Like it's well, also like though. You know, yeah, also trusting the person. If you're do, if you're if you're if you're fucking a corpse in a funeral home, I would you know that's unprofessional. If nothing else, we don't have to go into unethical. We could just call it unprofessional. It's like I if I fucked uh, 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 the uh, director's cut of Community in the edit bay. It's like, well, I don't know if he's doing anything bad. I just know that he should be working on the show. 
Yeah, All right. that's that's a good. Example. So so but 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 get, so apart from that, so I'm not judging if Don't you judge. if if you're listening and you have necroph- necrophilia esque uh, urges. Stop it. Look, I got I got mannequin legs in my in my home. I go et cetera. If you listen to the podcast, I'm a I, I got I'm a I, I could I'm, I have parasexual tendencies. So uh, what does uh, parasexual mean? Just Parapilic. anything other than you know what it sounds like, like 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 like. Like it's like a you you you, 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 you 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 do it jumping out of an airplane behind enemy lines. It's not like a <laughs> pussy, but it's sexual to you. Like it, it's like like a fake para, para, paraphilic. Is that what? It is? Yeah. I don't know. Is it? It's just, it's just like a, a, a paranormal. Para a fake, anything. Para, para a mannequin leg isn't a I pussy or a boob. Exactly. Like a foot isn't. If you have a foot fetish, you're right, you're, you're, under, under, you're under the umbrella of para paraphilic, like which. When you start to, it's like the end of Revenge of the Nerds. Everyone who's a nerd, come down here. If you're a nerd for any tiny reason, and you're all under one tent, then everyone is. We all like what Love is balloons. normal sexuality. That's what the Kinsey uh, uh, studies were. You know, the most useful at is going like, look, we're all we're all kinked, like hair. You know, what, what follicle is perfectly circular? Uh, uh, so, anyways, the my question to people who are necrophiles, or rather, not my question to them, my question about necrophilia is. How does that work? Is it because f- I aren't they like what they're, they're cold and they're it's like, like we we tend to leap to oh, they're putting their penis in a dead Grandma's vagina. Mouth. Oh, yeah, which then we go, well, logistically, that doesn't make any sense to me. Right, that doesn't make any sense. But you masturbate with a, a mannequin leg, isn't right? That well, cold? that's what I'm saying. Like, it's is like necrophilia? A- is it necrophilia if you're like working at a mortuary, and you're like, well, this person died very attractive. Uh, now their uh, uh, their blood is pooling on the underside, but uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and their joints are kind of stiff. But uh, you know, a foot's a foot, and I'm going to rub my dick on the sole yeah. of the foot yeah, until I, think I that come. Counts. Is that here's, necrophilia? Here's, here's a question. That can I, counts. Can I uh, ask a question to you? Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm I'm a mortician, and I like to fuck dead people. Okay. So win win right there. All right. From the, well, everybody's just, a winner. Just everybody's just, winner. just just like just okay, like just okay. like dead master priest uh, all these right, occupations. Right, yeah, right, just right. go and, where go. Yeah. Follow the heat. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> follow the money. <laughs> somebody, somebody brings in you when they bring in a dead, a dead body, and I've decided, oh, I, I'm gonna fuck this one today. Okay, you say, hey, I'm gonna fuck. You're this seeing one. it when they bring it in. Yeah, you're like, like mm, you're like, yeah, I think from I across can deal the with room. This. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, perfect. Boing, ding, it's great. Do I? And but my job is really not to fuck the dead people. The job is to can you make this presentable for us tomorrow. the customer is saying that the customer is like can you please can take you make, this and make this look more sleeping than dead right like alive but we can you know make our loved one look beautiful yeah can you do that so my question is do they f- f- fuck it before or after? Do they like go? Uh, you have oh, better I, necrophilia questions than I do. Because I'm like, if it's all, because I, the blood pooling I, is what made me go. Uh, I, yeah, you're I, right. I say, right. I say, you do both, and that way, That's true. Like you, like you, like, like go like, right, oh wow, you, 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 grandma, you clean up nice, and then you start, you, you like, like, you know, like, well, you here's like, an you, important question. Are these necrophilia questions when, when we're talking about mortuaries where there's like an influx of corpses? Uh, and, but but exactly at the same time, the whole point of that point of sale yeah. is to cheat death in a way, to r- restore lividity, to uh, all these things. Like if if you're if if it's if there's a problem as there is in forgive me Catholics, uh, you know, like wh- where there be uh, priests, there be um, problems. We've found if there's like nexus points of uh, is is that properly be necrophilia do do necrophiliacs i, I want to like because 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 like it, how many necrophiliacs do you think there are like do you think it's a well common he's just thing? telling an anecdote about how they it, went to a bunch of funeral they went homes to through like and, three or four funeral homes in southern california and every and he would made it a point that it was like every single one some intern some person a whistleblower like, somebody go these guys are Fucking the corpse for sure. They're night. fucking them. So it's like that Westworld dude that fucking is like fucking all the robots. But here's the thing: how like like I 
I'm not I'm not forgiving that behavior. I'm calling it unprofessional. Uh, po- <laughs> like like at like, the very like, least. But I'm just... not. But I'm wondering though. That's if what there, I would say if I caught him in the act. I want to understand what genuine necrophilia is, and if there's a distinction between that and someone who, for instance, if I walk by if Jeffrey Dahmer. Like he, like he was, he was, he was drilling holes in guys' heads, and and like experimenting with like pouring water and acid and stuff into the holes because he said to the police that his dream was to create what he called a zombie. And what I think he really meant by that, I'm not a psychologist, but it's like everybody gets to pile in on this. But I think the the popular theory is that what he really means by that is a man that won't judge him. Uh, for being gay, which he was, but he didn't have a healthy relationship with his gayness, and he he didn't he didn't you know he didn't realize that it's okay to go out and get a drink and tell another dude that what you really want to do is this or that. Like he had a lot of shame and all this stuff, and like he was, it's like did he really want to fuck corpses? Is that what a necrophiliac really is, or is a ne- is it like because I always wonder like. If there's an actual genuine necrophiliac, if someone's like, like I love rotting flesh, I love dead people, I I'm turned on by the idea of a dead person. Is that person offended by all these other yahoos who are basically just like, yeah, I'm insecure, I just don't want people judging me, so I'm gonna because uh yeah like Dahmer, uh hid out in a mannequin uh, in a store so he could abscond with a mannequin once like he he was he was taking these steps I think Schraub came over to my apartment in Hollywood once it was like when I was like starting to become aware of my like fetishes and stuff and he's like what the fuck what is going on? Like, are you a serial killer? I, because I, I had fucking mannequin legs. I wasn't legs. allowed in your bedroom because like, you said like there's, there's stuff in there that I don't want you to see. The menagerie. The men- yeah. The menagerie. And it's you know, and it's like I it it I was exploring stuff that had a lot to do with the intersections between my self awareness, my shame, and all this stuff. Like I came out on the other side, a guy who could say in a podcast, you know what I really want. Is for a woman wearing pantyhose to rub her toe on my nipple, and I got I said like like and Cody can be like yeah I like doing that too it it it, it strengthens my core and then we do other stuff and <laughs> it, it's like it's like it, it it really had nothing to do with so much like like it's the, all of the, this that's my necrophilia question it's like people is there such a thing as a person who's like I want the corpse to be like stinky and bruised I'm sure there is there's somebody who's into Anything, you know, they'd be into like there's yeah. people who want to like roll around in blood and yeah. guts. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, I mean, it's like it's like you know, like you can find anything on the internet to jerk off to because of that. Yeah, so people, so, some people want to, eat, some people want to eat people. Some people want to. Some people want to eat poop. So I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts with Cody. We go to sleep on them, and there's this uh, the the Sunset Strip Killers. Uh, uh, I think that's what they're called. Like it was this couple that were. It was, like, it was the guy indulging himself, and the woman was like kind of raised. Uh, you know, w- there's a lot of questions about it, but but she, according to her testimony, like he he loved to like pay people for sex and then kill them while they were performing sex on him because he would. He was like, like sex workers were a big target for him, but then he would, according to her, he would do shit. Like he would, he would like he he took he took a person's head into the shower with him, and he fucked the head. And the, the cops said that they found semen in the the decapitated head's throat. And um, but then the guy, who like they have him recorded and like giving his like deposition and stuff, and he's like, he's going like, what? So what? Do, what do you think I did? I put a head in a freezer. And I and I took a frozen head. Have you ever heard of rigor mortis? Like, what do I like? What? And, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take that in the shower. And then I'm gonna put my uh, dick in. in, in, in and he's like, he, he sounds like a completely rational person, going like, yeah. What What do you mean I fucked the decapitated head? That doesn't make any sense. But he probably did. But he has another lobe of his brain going like, that's crazy. Why I would that give I you a hard on? Why would you be able to? Uh, it's another yeah. thing to be able to achieve orgasm too. 
Like that's cr- how cr- yeah. imagine how being turned on that much yeah. by the idea that the head is dead, mm-hmm. not the idea that the head's going to do whatever you want because it's no longer judging you. I feel like that's a different. It's a power thing. So- well, no, I'm talking like, like like well, yeah. I think I think for a large amount of people under a larger umbrella, we, we like it's a a more quote unquote mainstream thing to have fantasies about loss of control. And about controlling others because we carry a lot of shame into sex. And so we naturally grow our sexual fantasies over across lines where for outside circumstances in our taboo imagination, I have permission to do this or I have to do that. And that's where, you know, BDSM kind of like, it's almost at this point post-internet, like we can acknowledge that like, you know, there's a like there's mainstream which is almost a theoretical construct which is a man and woman getting into their pajamas at night and laying next to each other and then a baby being brought by a stork and then there's everything kinky which 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 involves people thinking about things that they know they're not supposed to think about so that they can reach and scratch itches um that they think they they grow up thinking are denied them when the truth is with a consenting adult you could actually just say let's pretend this or let's have you do that and my safe word is apples and but so i I guess my my fascination and my question is but then that means i think that people who feel free to like meet someone and say let's kill a hooker together like these people aren't ashamed they're not like they're, they're not living with like all this shame so then when it's reported that they fucked the head or they they really they, they they always killed the person and then sodomized the corpse. These are people who actually can't wait for the dead part to happen. Right. So the answer would be to go back to my original question: Is that person would do those people fuck get, the the gunshot wound person right. without sewing up the holes? Right. Then they would get done and they go, "Well, I'm going to clean it off anyway." Right. I mean, that's the thing. It's oh, like you're cleaning it off twice if you're. But then there's a and then there's a different kind of person, and I'm yeah, sorry yeah. if this I don't know who I'm apologizing to. They'll be like, I didn't subscribe to this podcast. To his, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know who that person My is. My family but, listens to this podcast. But 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 I do. It is kind of fascinating then to think about the two. There's a, like 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 you could do a sitcom in a mortuary, and like like there's the guy who's like, well, uh, man, I, I can barely contain myself uh, before we make him look alive again. And then the yeah. other person is like, oh, now that we added all that rouge, I'm like, Grr. I know, now, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you watch the door. Well, I don't think these guys, you watch the I door think these guys time. both. I watched the door last time. You watched the door. I don't know if, these right. guys, if those guys cooperate, it's like a fucking most dangerous thing in the world. Like, I think they both, like, I go home they, to their wives and yeah. go, like, I think Ted's a pervert. I think, I think, I think this is how it is. Okay, so there's like what the, if old, like, they, they, the they, old guy and the new guy. The new guy comes in and the old guy teaches him, hey, you know. Hey, yeah, you know, go for it. No cop, no stop, man. Go for it, you know? What are you talking about? <laughs> I see you. I see you Look, checking them out. If we lived in go an idealized society, there would be like a, a, a good classic like like Karate Kid kind of movie yeah. where it's like, is that like, but it would be, I think it would be like a student becomes a teacher thing where the, uh, or no, okay, or so, like the classic version would be like the new guy comes in and he's like, yeah, I can't. Come on, let's put some let's put some embalming fluid in these things and like let's get them dressed up and and uh, and and looking alive. Uh, so because I, I you know the truth is I got to tell you now that we're having a drink in the back room, I want I want to fuck a corpse. And the and the mentor goes like, you want to fuck a corpse? <laughs> no, you don't. Listen to yourself. You can't wait until it's pretty. You can't wait until its eyes are closed instead of popped open, staring into the dead air. You, 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 you hate the bruising. If you were a real necrophile, brother, you'd be at the indoor with your heart on out. It's in the way that you use it. And it's, it's like he learns to be a purist. Okay. Write it. <laughs> Yeah, the necrophiliacs. This show's brought to you by Reebok. <laughs> it soon will be. Well, I guess I will. Okay, so I'm the only one that has these necrophilia questions. Well, I, I, did, I, 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 I had I'd the never best really given any thought. I mean, I, I think there's probably people that that death is a turn on because of their shame and because of the feeling of like lack of judgment. And then there's also people that I think that are just so fucked yeah. up. Like there's something about. 
It's so naughty. It's, it's so forbidden. It's, it's so fucking crazy yeah. that like I'm I'm the Johnny Rotten of of sex. Like I'm right. Yeah, it's right. It's like 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 misanthropic. Like because it's like when you get to the point where it's no longer a person. Like that. That's why it turns you on. Is that it's rotting flesh. That person is so fucked up. Not to. I mean, whatever, but like, uh, it, like, like that person has gone past so far past the threshold. They're, they're like, they hate humanity itself, and they're to the point where they love death. They're a necrophile. I want to fuck a corpse because it's dead. So, if you were from, like, say, a small town, and you were a mortician, it would be a good chance that you would know a lot of the people that would come through. Right. That's what? that's the ticket. What? That's Wait. the ticket. Then. Why is that the ticket? Because then you can go, hmm, Edith. Wait, but you don't want to put, you want. He's oh, saying. Because, well, yeah, because of the Johnny Rotten thing. It's vandalistic. You're like, oh, uh, I'm just I remember Gladys from the diner, would, and now she's dead, and that makes my difference. Yeah, hard. I mean, like, if you were into that, All right. maybe there's a different thrill, and maybe there's a motivation to work in a small town. I don't know. Dahmer went to uh, was at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. Did he? Wait, no, he didn't. He didn't Dahmer go to it, but oh. my, I had when I went back for my um, talk that I did there. One of my old sculpture teacher, Bruce, says, like a week before he was busted, he was at the Myad, like not gift shop, but like supply store, looking at the. There was, I don't know if you remember this, but back in the early 90s, there was this thing called Spray Fix or whatever, or Stone Fleck, and it was like a a can of spray paint, but it wasn't paint. It would just, like, make it look like uh, your block of wood was made out of marble or or stone or concrete or whatever. And he was looking for flesh. Well, no, here's the thing is, like, you know, like, the joke was in sculpture class that... There would be like, <laughs> like out of ten people, there would be nine stone fleck, like shoes, like th- that. It was just like instant art, sh- sh- whatever. Right, right. But Dahmer was checking out. That's where he bought the stone fleck. If you look into it, I think he sprayed like some skulls, some oh, human okay. skulls with this stuff. But my teacher like talked to him for a second. He's like, "Yeah, you're kind of a weirdo. Why is this guy here?" And then like a week later, uh, Dahmer got busted. Wow. And I was like, "Oh, I, I've, I've know. said like the true crime. My true crime podcast addiction is like obviously every 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 podcast is going to eventually touch on Dahmer. And I thought I was a bit of a Dahmer expert compared to the rest of the country because we're from Milwaukee when he was doing it. And uh, boy, oh boy, it's just you missed out. Well, it's it's we're so, paying attention. The pl- all that the, Gulf the, War, the police scandal thing is just." Fucking like, like, what do you mean? What do you well, mean? the you know the, how you know it, most people that have heard of Dahmer yeah. know the fact that w- that the cops brought victim number. I'm gonna make up a number right. like 14 of 17 or something like that. Like was brought back to his apartment because he escaped, and it was just like this. Like Dahmer showed up. He went w- with his bag of liquor that he went to go buy while he chained this guy to a bed who escaped and then it's like the cops brought him back to Dahmer's apartment and because Dahmer said oh we're just look we're lovers and yeah I know he looks underage and he's bleeding and he's delirious and he has handcuffs on his wrist but we're we're just gay like that and the cops like handed him over and and he killed him immediately well of course he did but then also he killed more people after that right right uh, and 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 the like I knew about all that, yeah. and I was like, okay, shame of a city and blah blah blah. But what I didn't know is that those cops were uh, something like even lighter than suspended without pay. It was like they still got paid. <laughs> they <laughs> and they and and one of them ended up like captain of uh, like it was like. It's like, it's like you hear this shit and then you go like, well, I'm sure, you know, it's important to be shameful and all this stuff. But then it's like it's like for real, like it just like it just they like the, the, there was no 
punishment. There was no, nothing happened to those two cops. And it's like, like, cause it doesn't your instinct, your human empathic instinct go like, well, I'd hate to be those two cops because they didn't know they were thrust into the midst of this thing. And who knows what it's like to be a cop and all this stuff. And you extend all this empathy and then you, and then you realize that there's, you're dealing with a system that does not extend even the slightest bit of that empathy by saying like, well, maybe you should fucking, even if for symbolic purposes, never be a fucking cop again, ever. Like, ever, within the 100-mile radius of the people whose families were eaten by this guy. Yeah. I, I, like, 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 go to Detroit. I don't know what. Let's figure something out. If the Vatican can come up with a system, we can. But no, they, they're just like, it was like, I, I, was like, I can't believe. Can you imagine being, uh, I, like, like, living in that neighborhood, which was, you know, on Marquette's campus where I went to school? Anyways. It's just, fu- it's fucking insane. Whatever. What were you talking about? Annihilation. Fucking corpses? Annihilation? Yeah, what were your questions? Oh, what's annihilation about? Is it, oh, what, what, my, my, I think I answered all my, I, I didn't. I, no, he had annihilation questions. Oh, yeah, We did answer questions. most of your necrophilia questions, okay. right? I thought we did, at least. Um, <clears throat> it's a pretty heady movie. So heady. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it was... It, it just, I, I mean, like, looking, look, I watched the movie, and it's very, like, I kind of, I can't, it would have been a better movie if it was made, like, say, in the 70s or maybe even the 90s, but it's, like, it, it, because it was, like, about, like, this meteor that crashed on Earth or something like that. It's a zone, a weird zone. A zone crashed on Earth or something. Appeared on Earth. A what? A zone appeared on Earth. A zone appeared on Earth. And where it is, things where are it a little is. different. And then, and then, like the prism effect, not only reflected reflected light or refracted light, but it also refracted uh, feelings, feelings and DNA and stuff like that. And it and it, and it got kind of weird. And it's a weird pacing thing, but. Um. Yeah, I don't know. If you haven't seen it, I can't. We can't really talk about it. Well, I can't oh, wait I've to check it out. It. Are there corpses in it? Oh, uh, there's a, a corpse, <laughs> but yeah. there's a bit of surprise with it. Let's are they, just are, leave are it. Are they at hot that. corpses? Jeff. Oh, one of them is. But that you know, a bit more than that. Spoilers, I think. One of it's really rotten. And a Sh- bit more. Than should that. we do some D's and tra- shamble some mounds, or is it's, there enough it's, time? It's quarter we don't two. Do that. Is, is that is that enough time? I mean, I'm so high still. Well, could I get high and then we'll do it? No. Can you, can, That's a sarcastic are, yes. Right? Are, 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 are you allowed uh, to get high like on camera? Like, no, we can't. We'll get arrested. Is That's that true? not true at all. Mm-hmm. It's true. No, I can say it's tobacco. What if it's, it's not? What if we say it's <laughs> fake pot that we bought? What if can, can Rob get it's arrested not. for I'll saying that you, he's I'll high? Tell them it's can, not. can he get arrested? Yeah, for and he fucking is. Fucking take me, man. Shrub, Fucking you're come under to my house. I gotta say, with a beard from this angle, from, like from a certain angle, stoned. there's a little Brody Stevens going on here. Oh, a lot of Brody Stevens going <laughs> on. I would say. Don't think it high on. Uh, you don't even know. I can't tell it's when you're being allowed. sarcastic and what your point ever is. Like you're just dry and dry and dry and dry. It sometimes it's great, you're, sometimes right? you're saying the opposite of what's true, and sometimes you're saying exactly what's true. What, can you can, like like what do you know about getting high on camera, on podcasts, etc.? Say the truth. <laughs> it's um. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, because like like uh, getting Doug with high, the, 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 everybody gets high at the show, but they don't live stream it. Right. I don't know uh, if it was, I feel. Uh, I feel like I did two versions of getting Doug with high. One where we were on like we there wasn't an podcast, audience. Yeah. And I we smoked pot on a camera. Video. Yeah. I get high just making eye contact with Doug Benson, and that's illegal. It's hard to make eye contact with him because one of his eyes is just looking at weed. Do you think? Uh, like Dan Spencer and I look like Spencer is slowly turning into me if like an evolutionary chart if we, if I took off my hat like no just like <laughs> Because the glasses are getting. I went darker. to the uh, Adderall doctor and I and I was like looking forward to it for two months because I've been fucking heavily working out. Yeah. And uh, seven pounds. Nice work. And I was like, I had a number in my head that was a little higher than that. Yeah, I was a little disappointed. I never thought I'd Eight. hear you lost seven pounds and be like bummed out. That's that's what I don't know. When I started weighing myself, that was the thing I had to break the most is just because it's like every time you get on, you have something in your head 
and you're going to be disappointed yeah. every time. That's why I didn't weigh, don't weigh myself. But I did think it was safe to fucking two months. Right, exactly. And that's what will always happen. Day. It'll yeah. always be the worst. So but, yeah. I'm never getting on a scale again. No, that's, you got to do the opposite. You got to only get on the scale until your nerves go dumb. I mean, numb. You I said you said yeah you can you you only take the lowest and highest or whatever and I do yeah. different I mean when I think of my weight I think of the last time I weighed myself but when I think about how far I've come from the fact that I used to be 270 pounds I go with the lowest because it's like holy shit I lost 57 pounds How do you get rid of the fat in your tits Wait why does it sit there forever Well if you come over to my place tonight I'll show you <laughs> Show me how to get rid of it or why it sits there both. <laughs> because I'll, sh- I'll show it's you for why. you to suck on. Is that I, no, I, 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 I titty fuck you. I, 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 there's, I, there's the patented Jeff B. Davis titty fuck workout where I, I, I just fuck your man titties, and and, and it really and you lose weight. Well, no, your your titties lose weight too. My titties lose weight, yeah, but you yeah, fucking yeah, yes. It's, I've heard uh, this it's before. It's about moving the fascia around the skin. Uh, it's it's a, it's called the dick and ball titty massage where this I get scam. right in there. And I and I titty fuck you and it, it, you remember the old like vibrating yeah. belt things? Yeah, it, it works in the same principle as that. And the, then he releases it's moving the magic that adipose, medicine. That adipose uh, like uh, tissue. Fat tissue. Did those belt things work? No. Huh? No, they did not work. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'm here to tell everybody about the Jeff B. Davis <laughs> patented titty fuck. Lose you lose your man titties in three nights. You'll lose your man. You, but you got to really relax. Why? As a person who like loves... You, you have to really, really just let it wash over you. <laughs> and I really mean that. Yeah. As a person who loves, as I assume you do, fucking men's no, I, titties... No, I, I do not do this oh, because I enjoy this. I'm, I'm a medical... Uh, uh, I'm a man of science. So you want I, them to I, go away? What? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a healthcare provider. I, I want people to like, like if you come to me and say I can't get rid of these testosterone, soy boy, fucking estrogeny man titties. Right. And I was like, look, I I have the cure for you, but this is not going to be the, the most masculine. Pro- it's not going to be the most. You might not like these three nights, but you, it's about results, and that's that's what I that's what I bring to the table is results. 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 Always be results. A B R. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna like it any more than you will. Dan. Do you promise that they'll be gone, my my titties? Or that is are you guarantees? That, that's absolutely a guarantee. That's a, oh, yeah, let's uh, take three your, nights. Take your shirt off right now. Let's do it before. Let, let's let's. We're gonna come back. We're, we're, we're gonna cut. Uh, well, just, the important <laughs> thing to look at is right here. This is the thing that bums me out. I would be fine with my body the way that's it is the right now. That's the hardest part. I just don't like part. this. If you because if you were to draw me. Like I don't mind if I have mm. like a belly as long as it's a smooth curve. I don't like this like you know. I don't like like you know Rough a curves. lump that you would have to like to an you, extra pen stroke. You get that sucked out. That's what makes me re- yeah, sympathize Dan, with people Dan, that get light because they're Dan, just like, well, just get it out of there. Dan, that's, what, that, that's, what, that's what we call lateral flange. That that's done in night lateral two. Flange. A lateral flange. We that's call done on that. night, yeah. that's two. night two. Night you, two, you're like, you're you're gonna find your lateral flange gone by two nights, and then the third night is just simply toning. Toning. Yeah, yes, it's all about shape, tone. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it just like you want. Most of the results come from the third night. Do you push them push them together around well, your titty penis? fucking man? He, I, I, well, I, I, what do you do? Well, when he's a lot of the things that he's describing are different. Than, are you? Titty, what planet do you titty I've never fuck titty fu- I think I maybe tried titty fucking huh? in my twenties. Like you know, you, you try everything because you see it in the movies, and I'm like, okay. And that's, after a while, you're like, you gotta okay, push I them think, together, man. I think in the movies, yeah, different. Man. How can you fucking do it wrong, man? Yeah, how can but, you fucking do it wrong? But how do you the, fucking but, do but, it? How do you I t- do there's it? There's a lot of different approaches. I take it on a titty by titty basis. <laughs> <laughs> but. First Do night, you change your no, technique on the second night? Well, because well, I mean, what, like, what is making oh, this go away? I don't again, understand. Your dick is rubbing he, he, my, uh, he, me. Human physiognomy is always very different from person to person. I, the, I the, love usually, human physiognomy. The first night, I fuck one titty individually. I alternate. I, I fuck just individual titties. I don't do just... Oh, you don't put it in between like a hot dog. Night, puts it night, into night, it. Night two, night two lateral flat. How do you titty fuck, man? <laughs> The, you tra- got to push them together. You gotta push these, them are, together. these are closely guarded trade secrets. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, why. I understand. Hey, man, how you titty fuck, man? <laughs> you got to push them together. 
Yeah. But we have we, we, we we'll, we'll post we, we, we're going to post the, the before photo. We're going to come back on next Sunday and we're going to see different results. Huh? Wait, you got to push them together, man. <laughs> it's titty fuck. Come on. It's the new character. Yeah, push them. <laughs> He's so irritated. He's so mad at the world for not well, titty you know, fucking it's, it's right. A, what are you doing, man? Well, yeah. You gotta push them together. In his defense, you gotta push them together. I don't even like that I have to call it titty fucking. I, I like to call it uh, titty flange removal. Breast loving. Right. Uh, but but the, I think the way that the, the, the world's eyes into my special technique is that people are gonna associate me putting my dick on your tits. As, it's just the yeah. simplest way to do it. The haters. Yeah, the haters are gonna call it that anyway. <laughs> right. So why not get out in front of that? <laughs> Do I? Do Does I? Does he think church? Is. Church? That's a, see, that's a great yeah, question. Important that, that's, question. I mean, if, you, if you go to if you go to tittyflangeremoval dot org dot med uh, dot med uh, the uh, on my FAQ first question: Do I finish? Right. No. Oh. I unless. The finishing is, do I finish giving you the results that you want uh, out of your man titties? Uh-oh. Sometimes I do come all over your neck. But that's, okay. That's, okay. okay yeah. that's, but that's yeah. only when that's what the but, but c- like, customer again, wants. Again, this is about, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a two-way street <laughs> of yeah. commitment. Uh, am, am I zealous? That. Yes. Is there, uh, is there, you know, it's, it's, it's a vigorous three-day <laughs> process. <laughs> And uh, it happens at night. It happens at my place. Right. And and, uh, and, uh, and I look. We 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 have the before photo. And it, and if you if you don't see results on Dan's titties as of next Sunday, Dan's money back. Wow. Or or I didn't go. Huh? Or I didn't go. Well, if you don't go, then we're not posting the after photos. Uh-huh. Right. See again. Second question on, on, the, on the Jeff B. Davis uh, titty flange removal technique system is how many people chicken out? <laughs> it's like, it's, they say when you go skydiving, the, the scariest part of skydiving is making the reservation to go skydiving. Oh. Jumping out of the plane is the easiest part. It's can I, Dan Harmon, commit to a three-day system to get like, the results that you want? I paid 500 bucks for this. If Yo, I don't well, jump out of this plane or let my friend come on my chest. Dan, uh, uh, Harmontown listeners, especially for uh, subscribers, if you subscribe this month to Harmontown, I'm going to give you the first night free. That's a $200 <laughs> discount. <laughs> $400 for a three-day system, normally $600. That's a $200 discount. Dan, I'm going to give you yours for free because I want to get this. You know, I want to get this system out there. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know what the state laws are <laughs> or when they become federal when we go w- with the podcast, but it, it, apparently I can't get high, but right. Jeff can off promise you that he'll rub his cock on your tits. Right, or your money uh, back. May or may not come on you, but then again, that's completely secondary. But only if you give him $200. <laughs> no, $400. It's normally $600. I'm giving subscribers to Harmon Town a $200 discount. The first night is free. If you use code... Code... Uh, code titty fuck. T- right. Yeah. And that's brave again, let's, let's, again, bring it, taking yes. it back. Is it childish? Of course it is, but like, let's. That's what let, people are going to say. It's like the Soylent guy. It's yeah, like, that's what people are going to say. Yeah. Just call it that. Mm-hmm. Just like the Soylent Get guy. Get out in front of the critics. Also, my dick is made of micro model fiber. It's, just, <laughs> it's three times softer than cotton. Do you think that's what Nigel ate, or do you think I just cut him open every six weeks? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's the question. Did did he just eat enough of your of your butthole out of your underwear to to die? I don't fucking know, man. I what if wanna... it's just a bunch of little swatches of me undies, micromodal f- fiber just came out of your dog's butt? Have you ever, you know, you hear people go like, "Well, if I could, if I could, like, you know, if I could take, like, I, I would green mile my dog's." Stomach wound because I'd be like, you know what, that one's on me for sure. I would, I would do it too. I would green mile that shit. I would take, I would be like, okay, dr- s- put a slit in my stomach and I'll lay in bed and like feel bad because that's not even that noble a sacrifice. Because I could, I have the capability of saying, Cody, can you get me a Lacroix? Nigel can't be. He's he's like he can't. He doesn't. He doesn't know why we do anything we do. You scoop him up, like, because you love him, and he's shivering, and he's like, why am I hurting? And then you take him to a place that's like, and then you leave him. The worst. It's and their terrible. brain is the size of a fucking, like, four-sided die. Oh, I 
know what that is because <laughs> it's like a thing that I relate to. All right. Well, apparently we got two, we got two minutes to play D and D. No, Spencer's the only one that's allowed to be stark raving high on stage. I'm not high. What? He's, a, he's afraid that if we all get high, will he'll be out of a job? You like see, his job is to be this high. You check out this week's Atlanta. No, I haven't seen. It. I said Dan said, loves there Atlanta. Was like a, there was a Slenderman thing, or I saw. No, no, no. I never said that. Well, I saw like a f- still. There's a big a, Slenderman arc. This no, no, season. no. There's a. a <laughs> I guess I was. I guess I completed there's a, two there's things. There's a Slenderman, Slenderman movie out. coming out. Oh, Slenderman. I thought I, I, thought I saw, I thought I saw like a still. And I, thought, I swear to God, I'm not even doing a bit. Like I thought it was like an Atlanta episode. There was a sl- this is how much I'm like me not watching Atlanta. I'm also starting to enjoy this Atlanta in my head. <laughs> like, oh, there's a Slenderman episode. There is, yes. Yeah, <laughs> well, Slenderman a, gives him a sandwich. It's it's a uh, it's a fucking great episode. You should watch it. it you gotta watch it. Do I have to watch from the beginning? No, no, no. It's a good season. Uh, no. I, I mean, I, honestly, I mean, I haven't. That's the first episode I watched. I loved it. It's Steven, pretty Steven Soderbergh even said, like, this is, like, the best. Did Glover, di- did Donald direct the? I one? think he wrote it, but yeah, I, it's, I, I think. He works with the director. Is, I think you should check it out because mm-hmm. he's amazing. It's fun. It's just, you know, it's not the kind of television you uh, would ex- we, that has existed in the past. You know, it's just interesting to see what the medium can be. You know, it could be a cartoon and it could be Atlanta. It's cool. Hey, Dan, did you know that uh, the photo that Church took of you at the protests of you with wearing the Rick and Morty thing, drinking a flask, mm-hmm. uh, Just I posted it on my Instagram. She's already sold a couple prints. People want that print. Or, or she's making a limited 10-print uh, run of those, and people are snapping them up. Snapping yeah, it's, up? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, that's, a good, that's a good photo. It's, I like that it says, it's, I'm wearing my Help Me uh, Morty and Summer uh, T-shirt, but it's, it just says, Help Me. <laughs> <laughs> In the shot. All right. Well, uh, what a show. What Boy, a show. Hey, uh, hey. We really got through to some stuff. We well, did. I'm uh, interested to play this one back and understand, like, what, what what line did I cross in asking my necrophilia questions? It made everybody. You, cross you crossed the line where you chose to not offend necrophiles. Oh. Well, yeah, because I don't. I thought, but look, I've gone to bat for pedophiles on this show. I fucking hate, like, I, I like, yeah. I hate victimization. So people that victimize other people for their own pleasure, like, okay, they're doing something that is criminally wrong. They're f- and they're going like, like, like. So isn't that enough? Are we going to solve the problem by just being so happy that we found monsters? I find it really fucking weird, but not weird. It's totally understandable that what we we go like, oh, what gives you a hard on? What ladybugs? You're fucking crazy. And it's like we've we're all that person, like in some specific I don't fuck way. Ladybugs. We're all that person, and and then and then we just like, are we really like? That's exactly what they do in prison. Is they're all in there for fucked up shit, and then they get so fucking excited when they hear a fucking pedophile is in prison that they run down to fuck the person to death or whatever. Like it, it, it's like it's bullshit. Come on, like like what? like criminality is criminality. Like some people are sick. Some people are experiencing cycles of abuse. Like people that are, are abused in their childhood, they grow up to abuse people. Guess how you solve this problem? You know, it's not it's not through being so excited to find someone alien and monster that you like point your finger at them and throw mud at them. It's not gonna change anything. Cliffhanger! Thank you so much for coming or watching or you didn't even come. You're just watching or listening to it. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming down here for Rob Schraub, everybody. And when you find out whatever file I am. I went to bat for you. Yeah, we're sorry to all the necrophiles if anyone was offended. <laughs> sorry we didn't get to bring I'm church back. up and leave you tonight, but they will be back, of course. Sorry also, let's thank Kevin, Chris, Zach, Sarah, Yusan, Spencer, Crittenden. As all time, I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis. I'm proud to be back in town. Your mayor of Town. He's going to fuck a dead person tonight. What if we open with D&D next time? Let's open. Idea. We're gonna open with D&D right after Dan Harmon shows you his newly sculpted titties. The Jeff B. Davis titty flange removal three-day system. Uh, go online. Uh, Boston, buy your tickets to Boston. Yeah, Boston uh, on J- 
January 22nd at the Wilbur Theater. Uh, it's going to be Wicked, Retarded, and possibly a pisser. And also the 23rd, Long Island, somewhere at the Aviation, Flint Flam, and uh, uh, Rib Joint, and, uh, and uh, Fish Fry. Did you get any of that? It's a good show!